Hello, this is Haku Dabin, and I am here with SCP-46, 47, and 48. Next SCP video, which is why I'm not doing number 49, will be about an SCP that is too famous to be lumped in with others. After you're done watching this video, or even right now, how about you go down, leave a like, like, subscribe, and leave a comment for me. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments below. If you want to hold off on that until the end, uh, it is also very reasonable. We're starting off with SCP-46, Predatory Hollybush. Item number 46. Object Class, Euclid Special Containment Procedures The land surrounding SCP-46 has been purchased and surrounded by multiple layers of security, including fencing, barricades, and lethal effect traps. Multiple signs marking the area's private property are to be prominently displayed. The area is to be heavily guarded at all times to prevent access by civilians to SCP-46. All personnel working around or within a 50 the kilometer radius of SCP-46 are to undergo radical, rigorous medical testing to ensure the absence, the absence of any potentially life-threatening illnesses. Additionally, increased mental health examinations are to be administered to ensure that no personnel inclined or potentially inclined towards self-harm or self-destructive tendencies are within the 50 kilometer radius. Any injured personnel are to be evacuated to a health hospital outside of the 50 kilometer radius or zone around SCP-46. All, vegetarian, all vegetation surrounding SCP-46 is to be destroyed and all animals attempting to access SCP-46 are to be terminated and destroyed before reaching its outer perimeter. Any personnel showing an unusual interest in either in SCP-46 or in traveling to the region near SCP-46 are to undergo medical examinations. As detailed above, any modifications to these containment procedures are to be approved by a O5 command before being added to this containment document. Any personnel attempting to modify this document without appropriate authorization are to be demoted and reassigned. Description SCP-46 is a predatory botanic Medical mass located in southwestern Kentucky. SV46 is composed of two large parts. SV46-1 is a large mass of vegetative matter composed largely of plants indigenous to the re region, including Quercus alba, Elix aquifolium, Endless and Lonicera sempervirens. The several offshoots composed of other plant species are also present. SV-46-2 is the land in the immediate vicinity of SV-46-1, extending to roughly circular 20 meters in radius from its base. This area is SV-46 primary feeding area. SV-46 is capable of attracting prey within a 50 kilometer radius through hallucinogenic means. All evacuations of personnel should carry them outside of this radius to disable SCP-46's effects. Animals, including humans suffering from potentially life-threatening physical injuries or diseases, or who are afflicted by psychological disorders that induce self-destructive tendencies, feel a powerful compulsion to come to SCP-46-2 and lie in a prostate a position facing SV-46-1. Individuals lying in such positions are rapidly attacked by an unusual, fully powerful combination of saprophytic organisms and opportunistic infections, including several strains of methicillin and resistant Staphylococcus as aris MRSA, known to induce is necrotizing infestolitis, also known as flesh-eating bacteria. A form of fungal spore similar to Ustachyphotris 
Catarium, I am not liking these names, or black mold, which poison in spray organisms and, and induces paralysis. And finally, complete consumption by a several, oh, herefore unknown species of insect that emerge from the inside of SCP-4061 during the final stage of feeding. SCP-4061 appears to derive nutrition and to complete that digestion of affected individuals, particularly larger mammals such as humans. It is unknown whether SCP-46 is capable of growth, as such, all steps are taken to ensure that SCP-46 is deprived of prey until more information is known about all steps about its abilities. These efforts are to include terminating individuals prior to their arrival at SCP-46 and disposing of their bodies in a separate location. And then them A. Investigation is, is ongoing into potential mimetic effects brought about by knowledge of SV-46 due to anomalous effects demonstrated by certain pers personnel in response to SV-46. Access to document 4607 is restricted to level 4 personnel and above. Oh, now we get another document. We're going to start at the special containment procedures, because we already know it's safe, apparently. Although before, we were told it was Euclid. Anyway, special containment procedures. The land surrounding SV-46 is to be carried off, marked as pirate property, and surrounded by multiple layers of fencing. The area is regarded by no less than 10 guards, though minimal armaments are required. While knowledge of SV-46's effect is not to be made, and widely known, personnel afflicted with threatening, life-threatening diseases may be permitted to enter SCP-462 after psychological screening for self-destructive tendencies. Likewise, the E-class personnel's elected for termination may be effectively exposed to SCP-462 to facilitate the process. Due to the lack of threat to Foundation security, individuals not employed by Foundation may be permitted to access to SCP-46. The foundation needs to needs for access takes first priority. SV forty six is composed of two parts. SV forty six one is a cylindrical area five meters in, in diameter and thirty meters tall, containing several species of plant matter, including white oak, European hollybush, and Kentucky honeysuckle. Though several offshoots is composed of other plant species are also present. No anomalous traits have been detected in the molecular composition of the plants. SV-46-2 is a clearing of grass extending approximately 20 meters around SV-46-1. SV-46 is a anomalous effects extend primarily to animals, including humans, that are threatened by chronic or debilitating illnesses or injuries. SV-46 is frequently visited by such individuals. Humans of this type report having felt a compulsion to travel to SV-46's location. Often reporting that the location came to them in a dream. Psychological evaluations have consistently shown that such individuals were not previously aware of the Foundation or SV-46's specific properties. Individuals feeling this compulsion have all reported it having been within 50 kilometers of SV-46 at the time. That is believed to be the outer range of the object's compulsive of range. Individuals who came to SV-46 consistently describe a dream in which they laid down in the vicinity of SV-46-1 and rest. Upon, immediately upon entering SV-46-2, individuals suffering from chronic pain or traumatic mental conditions will describe their symptoms as receding, accompanied by a feeling of calmness, relaxing, and relaxation and euphoria. Individuals lying down in front of a SV-46-1 will begin to be covered by small, by several vines, similar to runners of cynodon and, and dactylon plants, also known as Bermuda grass, followed by the appearance of sprouting of uh, more grass all over the body, because I'm not trying to say that again. SV-46 has no compulsive properties and its effects will only manifest on individuals willing to experience the effects voluntarily. 
The individuals exposed to SP46 will remain communicative until they are no longer visible beneath the grass growing across their bodies. All individuals exposed to SP46's effects describe a feeling of peace and serenity and happiness that they were able to die pleasantly. SCP-46 appears to fully decompose individuals exposed to its effects within two hours and may or may not use decomposed tissue as a food source. Addendum 1. SCP-46 is reclassified as Euclid and primary containment document is rerouted to demonstrate SV-46 is predatory in nature by order of O5 command. Any references to voluntary individuals are to be removed. Description to be rewritten and to, you, to emphasize the volatile and lethal nature of SV-46 and potential threat thereof. Addendum 2 There is no evidence whatsoever that SCP-46 is predatory or has any desire to harm any creature unwilling to expose itself to SCP-46's effects. Suggest original containment procedures be reenacted and voluntary access to SCP-46 continued. No individuals are capable of reaching Foundation security once exposed to SCP-46. As such, there is no reason to deny afflicted individuals the opportunity for relief. Likewise, there is no reason to make this entity seem more hostile than it actually is, aside from a desire to portray every object in Foundation custody as dangerous. Some things may be contained simply because they are strange. Dr. Edward Carter, Head Researcher, SV46 Addendum 3. Dr. Carter, Principal Researcher for F or SV46, is removed from the his position and reassigned to the the SCP-1250 project, addendum 46-1, stands by order of 05 command. Seems a bit like overkill by the 05 council, but whatever. Now we're going to SCP-47, microbial mutagen. Item number, SCP-47, object class, Cater. Special containment procedures. SV-47 is to be contained in a 0.5 by 0.5 by 1 meter hermetically sealed storage box at all times. This box is to be locked in storage locker 047A inside P3 Secure Biohazard Lab 047B. Any interest to and activity inside 047B will be recorded by a biometric scan, closed circuit camera, and redacted. Entry to U047B requires the authorization of the project manager, in addition to at least one O5 level clearance. SC-47 is to be treated as a priority for contagious as biohazard within all protocols, including mandatory quarantine if exposed. Site Q047 has been provided a, a, a to lab 47B for this purpose. In the event of outside contamination of SCP-471, lockdown protocol of 471-Yersenia must be engaged. Description SCP-47 is a heavily rusted and breached gas cylinder made of an iron redacted alloy. When exposed to open air, the material of the cylinder evaporates slowly, producing a previously undocumented mutagenic gas. The gas has no effect on eukaryotic organisms like humans, but profoundly alters its prokaryotes. So, in preference to common human microbiota, the natural um, microorganisms that live on the skin and throughout the body. On rare occasions, these mutations produce a superbug, collectively known as SV-471, a natural commensal with enhanced survivability and therefore optimistic pathogenicity. The pattern of changes induced by SV-47 suggests that these highly infectious microbes are at least some degree selected at four. Uh, species of SV-47-1 species are the specifics of SCP-41 
for seven and one species are depend on the base bacterium from which it is derived. There are several characteristics which appear to be generally consistent across all cases of SCP-471 and mutation. <sighs> Enhanced survivability in the bacterium's natural environment and similar environments, full-spectrum antibiotic resistance, increased reproduction rate and consumption of available material. Development of a spur or a relation ability in gram positive bacteria, increased ability to uptake, hold, and share plasmids, particularly in gram negative bacteria, increased transmission due to traits described above. SC471 samples are normally debilitating and virulent. However, compared to other, ca other class SCPs, it should be noted that SCP471 have a relatively low mortality rate due to their, their action through men mundane biological pathways. Several strains of bacteria have been selectively mutated by SV-47. Mutation of bacteria in culture is possible, but the process appears to be much more effective with bacteria living on a human host. Generally, mutation of natural commensals for experimental purposes is encouraged. After the confirmed breach of uh, January 30th, 2010, We'll see that incident report shortly. Mutation of already pathogenic species is banned and all existing samples must be destroyed. These particular species of SV-47-1 mutated the bacteria are of note due to their involvement in the continued breach of unknown date. Forty seven A, I'm not uh, saying that word. Pathogenicity. Severe con skin colonization around subacuous glands. Modification of skin pH H2 levels that become toxic to skin cells. Massive inflammation and immune cell infiltration. Eventual breakdown of skin structure leading to sepsis. Transmission. Transmitted by skin to skin contact can remain active on an organ. In organic surfaces for up to five hours. Lethality. Approximately 40% mortality rate runs its course in two to six weeks. Very visible symptoms within five to ten hours. Contagious within two to five hours. Handling. As soon as visible symptoms form, victims must be quarantined. Deceased victims should be incinerated. 47C is a strain of. Streptococcus might it is mutated by SC47. Pathogen is the cause this is inflammation of the mouth and, and suffix initially leads to open sores in the mouth, which re result in an 47C entering the bloodstream and becoming septic. That is usually due to infectious endocarditis. Transmission, droplet, can remain active individually by spore regulation. Lethality, approximately 35% mortality rate. May become a recurring chronic addition if not lethal. Handling, subjects with any signs of mouth infection should be quarantined. Deceased victims should be incinerated. C47A is a strain in of clostri clostridium. Difficile, mutated by SV47. Pathogenicity. Unknown. C47A was developed from tissue culture that has never been exposed to a human. No samples remain in foundation control. Transmission. Unknown. Assumably transmitted through fecal contamination with it, it, C. difficile. Due to smaller, more robust spores, may also aerolize with flatus. Effect of aerosol intake of C47A cannot be predicted. Lethality. Unknown. Presumed extremely high risk of, of destruction of endothelial lining or gas gastrointestinal tract, leading to inflammation, sepsis, toxic, egg, egg colon.
Handling. Until further research has been done, victims should be quarantined and placed under 24-hour medical observation to develop further diagnosis for the strain. The deceased victims should not be incinerated until adequate it, it, logical research has been performed. Recovery log, UG-47. SC-47 was recovered from the site blank secure laboratory by Foundation Biohazard Recovery Team in response to a full compromise situation in the 1990s. Testing logs indicate that the research team was attempting to contain a sponge in a class blank SV stable pressure cylinder, which led to redacted combining with redacted, a full molecular biological analysis of it. This is available in, react in redacted. The initial release of gas when SV47 was structurally compromised was sufficient to cause a microbiome little bloom of uncount species of SCP-471, killing all staff in the, in the lab within hours. Exposed site blank staff obeyed the standard foundation quarantine slash containing protocol and the infection was contained successfully. Now, here's something we have to look into. <sighs> Instant report, Yersinia. SCP involved, SCP-47. Description, on January 30th, 2010, at approximately 3 in the morning, storage locker 47C, containing bacteria samples mutated by SCP-47, was compromised after a complete simultaneous data expunge, leading to failure of security measure is in the area. Three samples of a total of 12 were stolen. That expunged the initial containment and break. The outbreaks of, of one of the stolen bacterial and well, strange P47A was recorded globally in communities of increasing size and population density. Further information on stolen material spread and containment follows. P4 compromised items P47A, S47C, and C47A. We'll see us. Well, we already have the info from SC47. Outbreak information. First outbreak P47A, February 27, 2010, Siberia. Contained. See incident report. Priority reading the incident report. Second outbreak. P47A on March 30th, 2010. Northwest Territories, Canada. Contained. Third outbreak. P47A, April 29th, 2010. South Australia. Contained. See incident report. Fourth outbreak. P47A, May 27, 2010. Matt Grasso, Brazil. Believe contained CA incident report. Warning, agents in the area are advised to familiar themselves with the symptoms of P47A and be on the lookout for possible infection. Fifth outbreak, P47A, June 26, 2010. I was almost 10 at that time. Anyway, redacted Iraq. Site immediately data expunged, which is believed to have contained the infection. Access to incident report denied without O5 clearance. Six outbreak. P47A. July 26, 2010. Cameroon. Quarantine in enacted efforts to track outgoing civilians underway. Infection not contained. See incident report. Seventh outbreak. P47A. August 24th, 2010, Ilar Arna, Sweden, quarantine enacted, believed contained, see incident report, warning, agents of the IAR are advised to familiar themselves with the symptoms of P47A and get on the lookout for possible infection. Eighth outbreak, not recorded, believed to have taken place in North Korea. Data expunged. Agents with governmental access are 
attempting to gain access to parallel information, but due to that expunged, local services have been extremely uncooperative. Containment status unknown. Ninth outbreak, P47A, October 23rd, 2010, South Carolina, USA. Quarantine enacted. Efforts to track outgoing civil uh, civilians are merely successful. One civilian is in a pickup truck is believed to have that expunged. Infection not contained. Resolution. Reports from a data expunge indicate no further outbreaks are believed likely, but agents are advised to be on the lookout for new flare-ups resulting from uncontained civilians in previous as outbreak regions. These may be a continue for years to come due to P47A's for relation. Investigation into the cause of this of the initial compromise is underway. Anyone with useful information with an anomaly contact security via the attached form. And now we are reading SCP-48, also known as the Cursed SCP Number. Item Number, SCP-48, Object Class, None. See Description. Special Containment Procedures. The designation SCP-48 is to be retired from the SCP Catalog. No future SCPs are to be reassigned to this number. Description. SCP-48 has long been considered the cursed SCP number by SCP staff. Any items given this as designation tend to be destroyed, decommissioned, stolen, or otherwise lost to the Foundation, usually through no ill fault of any individual person. In addition, personnel assigned to SCP-48 and its various its incarnations have had a 50% higher rate of turnover due to death, dismemberment, and disciplinary action. Whether or not uh, the number 48 actually has any supernatural qualities is unknown, but given the superstition around this number, the designation has been removed from the catalog in order to help maintain employee morale. And then the one. This is ridiculous! Alpha group of you superstitious it's jerks that you that you're all just being in babies. This restriction of SP. Before you is now removed and assigned to dead expunge. Addendum 2. SV48 dead expunge was accidentally joined into the trash this morning and lost. In an unrelated accident, Dr. Corus's arms were accidentally traumatically amputated in a horrifying and a horrific lunchroom blender accident. SV48 closed. 0511. Addendum 3. SV-48 has been once again removed from the archives after it became highly apparent that no such vampire boat had ever existed, much less come under a foundation control. It's currently believed that this error occurred when a low-level researcher attempted to save his awesome story idea to his hot hard drive and instead overwrote the blank slot reserved for SV-48. Said researcher has been removed from any and all archival duties for the time being. So SV-48 just doesn't exist because it's dangerous. Anyway, this is this has been SCP-46, 47, and 48. I hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you next time with SCP-49. Goodbye!